Hello, this is part two of chapter four. We're going to go a little bit more in depth and clarify a few things from part one. So chapter four is savings and investment in closed and open economics. So we're going to look at relationship between interest rate and saving interest rate and investments. Well, intuitively speaking, when the interest rates go up, the savings go up. Because for people, it's easy to earn money by just keeping them in the bank account. If you can keep your money in the bank account and uh, make more money because it's higher interest rate, you're going to do that versus investing in physical goods and companies and things like that. You will just put it in a bond that gives you a higher interest rate. So savings go up as interest rate go up. And vice versa. If interest rate goes up, that means it's uh, difficult for people to borrow money because now all of a sudden you have to pay 10% uh, return versus 2% return for the house that you have, right? So the mortgage rate, if it goes up, the house all of a sudden becomes more expensive. So it's difficult to borrow money and return higher interest rate to your lender. And so when interest rate goes up, investments go down. So that's intuitively, we know those two relationships. So now let's look at uh, the two curves, right? We've seen from part one, the savings is um, I plus NX, right? Where NX is net export and investments. So the savings and investment uh, relationship is as follows, right? As we saw earlier, as uh, savings goes up, interest rate goes up, right? Investments go down, as uh, interest rate goes up, right? As interest rate goes up, investments go down, right? They're going down. Investments increase as interest rate goes down, right? More people will buy more homes when it's cheaper, right? So that's the relationship. So at any point, if we see here, where R star is in equilibrium, and at any point here where a desired saving is greater than the desired level of investment, meaning there are more people at point B who are willing to borrow you money than the people who are willing to take money from you, meaning there is an oversupply of money. What happens when there is oversupply of money, which is this pair A and B? There'll be competition. Someone will say, hey, I'll give you, instead of 10%, I'll give you a 9%. So there's gonna be a downward pressure for interest rates to fall the real interest rates to fall because there's more savings, more money available than people willing to invest. Vice versa, there's going to be an upward pressure when there's so many more people willing to invest money because there is market optimism, but there is less savings. There's The money is not available, meaning whatever is available is going to go at a premium. So interest rate pressures would be going up. So that's how we, we learn from savings and investment, how it influences the interest rate, right? The real interest rate. So that's what I've written here, right? At point A and B, how interest rate falls, and point C and D, how interest rate, uh, there's a pressure to go up. And now let's look at uh, the large economy, and, and then we will look at small economy. So the large open economy is something like United States where changes in savings, changes, changes in investments have an impact on interest rate, real interest rate. And in small open economies, that's not the case. They have very limited size power to actually influence the interest rate. So that's the only difference. So now let's look at how does the graphs look in a large uh, open economy, right? In a large open economy, when savings go up, so S moves from this black line here to this uh, blue line, savings go up, interest rate falls, right? Interest rate falls uh, because the overall pair of S1, I1, which is this point, goes to S2, I2, which is a higher point. So as autonomous consumption drops because people want to save more and as government investment increases, we see that interest rate falls. So when savings goes up, interest rate falls in a large economy. And vice versa, right? Uh, if uh, savings go down, interest rate go up, 
right? Because there's less money available. Um, same same is the concept we saw earlier. More money is available, savings going up. More money is available in the savings account for investment. So you're gonna get less return out of it. So similarly, if investments go up, opposite as we saw. As investment goes from I to I1, interest rate go up, right? Because more people are willing to build factories, there's lots of optimism, there's a tax cut, uh, and so there's more available to invest, and so the interest rate tend to go up when S1, I1 pair moves up. And vice versa, as investments go down, interest rates go down, right? Because there's less, uh, more money available. So now, now let's compare and contrast small versus large open economies, right? Small economies, we see that the R star, the equilibrium is not changed. We saw these two curves, right, where interest rate falls when savings goes up. But in small economies, small open economies, um, there are net exports, the NX1, which was this intersection of this S and I char S and I line here, which is the net export, they will not have equilibrium at this point. They'll have an equilibrium to whatever the world market or the large economy set. So they will be exporting um, and their net export increases as savings goes up for them. Basically they are going to be shipping savings outside, right, in some way, either through exports or investing in other countries outside of their own. But in the same way, so savings when it goes up, net export increases in small economies. We saw this earlier, savings goes up, right? Real, real interest rate decreases. Similarly, as investments go up in small open economies, uh, their net export inc decreases from NX1 to NX2 because they're using that money and keeping it with them. So hopefully that helps us distinguish a little bit more clearly between difference between small open economy and large open economy, relationship between investments, savings, and interest rate. These three curves are very important. Thanks.